Nadia introduced me. My name is Tania and I have the pleasure of speaking to you for the next 45 minutes. And that's something that I'm very passionate about. Goals and motivation. Now this is extremely important. This is very important. And as I go through my presentation, I think you'll realize why this is so, so important. Um, Nadia also explained to you that I am a study practitioner as well. So I see lots of students coming to me uh, to ask for study skills and study interventions. And I always stop with goals and motivation. Always. Because in my opinion, this is the place to start. If you want to excel academically, you need to start with your goals and motivation. But let's go through it. I love that saying. I've got a couple of sayings in here. But look at that one. You can achieve only so much as you allow yourself to dream about. So as a starting point, I want to ask you, do you have a dream? Yes. Good. I hear some of you say yes. My next question then. Wonderful if you've got a dream. That's fantastic. But how will you reach that dream? Because it's not enough only to have a dream somewhere in your mind. That's not enough. It's a good place to start, but that's not enough. The more relevant question is, how will you reach that dream? How? And there's only one way to reach your dream. And that is to have a goal. Now, my colleague Henry spoke a little bit about goals, and he put it in the context of time management, which is excellent. I'll refer to that as well. But, ladies and gentlemen, yourselves and your mentees, they need to have a goal. You absolutely need to have a goal. A goal is a dream with legs. I love that as well. Why legs? Because it takes you to where you want to be, ultimately. Only 3% of adults have actually clear written goals. But those 3% accomplish 10 times more. Now imagine if you can accomplish 10 times more in your studies. Just think about that. So why is it important to have goals? It's so important, ladies and gentlemen, for your own positive mental health, but also to be productive. And you are students. I always like to say to students that their jobs They've got a job now. What is your job? The job is being a student. You've got job descriptions. What is your job description? Go to class, write assignments, take notes, manage your time, etc. That's your job description. Myself and Nadia, we need to be at our jobs from eight to four, eight hours a day. You need to be also working at your job eight hours a day to be productive to have that productive living. Okay, so it's very important. I found with students that if they have no goals, and maybe you'll see that as well. If you ask your mentees, do you have a goal? And they say no, then they struggle. If you don't have a goal, what happens? Is you actually become lazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You do, of course. And also sometimes depressed, why? because you don't have this vision, this dream to work towards. So you feel depressed, you feel lazy. You don't have any drive. That vuma, that something that spurs you on. You know what that is? That is your goal, ladies and gentlemen. That is your goal. Your personal goal that drives you towards you, what you want. And that is only up to you. Nobody can create your goal on your behalf. They can, maybe. Mm -hmm. But that will be difficult. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So, how to set a goal? Because it's very easy. If I ask you, do you have a goal? How many of you would raise your hands? Do you have a goal? Did you see? Majority of you. Okay. But, then if I ask you, do you have a smart goal. I wonder how many of you will raise your hands. Okay. 
Let me go through my explanation and afterwards you can ask yourself, hmm, is my goal smart? Because just to have a goal, it's a, it's a place to start. But you need to have a smart goal. That is very important. And I'll explain the smart goal to you. Firstly, S stands for specific. Your goal needs to be very specific. You cannot have a vague goal, ladies and gentlemen. If it's vague, how would you know where to go to? So, you need to know exactly what it is that you want to accomplish in your life and for yourself. Exactly. It must be very specific. Look at my example up there. And in my office, I told you I usually start with goal setting. And I would ask my student, what is your goal? And they would say things like, I want to be rich. <laughs> or I want to be successful. Okay? Like I said, it's a start. But how would you know if you accomplish that goal? How would you know? Something like when I am 23, I want my degree. It can actually be more specific uh, because then you can say which degree, for instance. No. So it needs to be very specific, your goal. Next, M. Your goal needs to be measurable. You need to be able to measure, measure your goal so that you know that you're reaching it. So for that, you need to have mini goals. It's that small and younger steps that you need to take so that you can ultimately reach your big goal. So you need to have those mini goals set in place. Now mini goals is important because it helps you to feel that you are reaching your goal ultimately. That you feel, yes, I'm on the right way. I'm on the right track. Main goal, complete my first year in 2013. Mini goals, enroll for my first year, find out how many subjects I need to complete, what percentage do I want for each one of my subjects? For instance, my goal would be, I want to have an average of 70% for all my subjects. It's very specific, isn't it? And you can measure it, 70%. So, you need to have your mini goals to measure your progress. A, small daily improvements are the key to staggering long-term results. Staggering. Attainable. You need to know that you can achieve these goals that you set out for yourself. Can you achieve your goals? Wonderful. <laughs> I once had a student in my office when I asked my student, what's your goal? A student said to me, I um, received, and I can't remember the exact amount, uh, but he said, I um, got, I think it was something like 18% for my last test. And I asked, okay, let's see, what will your goal be? And the student said, I want 80% for my next test. <laughs> All right, so is that attainable? Maybe ultimately, but maybe not just now. Let's see. What is your next step? That could maybe be to pass that subject. Okay. Can it be achieved? Very important. Or is it relevant? Now this is the part where you need to think about your goal and think if it's got meaning for you. How important is this goal in your life? This is the personal part of goal setting. Now, if somebody else set a goal for you, like I said, it is achievable, yes. It can maybe be relevant, but it will be very difficult for you to achieve that goal because it's not yours. It's not your position. You don't have ownership of that goal. So your goal needs to be relevant to you. It must be personal for you. And then T, time bound. There needs to be deadlines in your goals. It's very important because otherwise, what will drive you? If you tell yourself, one day I will get my degree, sure. That means it can take you 10 years to reach your goal. Okay. So there needs to be deadlines. 
And deadlines are important because it can also motivate you as well. So ladies and gentlemen, your goal needs to be SMART. Very important. S stands for? M A R T. Wow. Impressive. Well done. Yes. So always remember, for yourself, but also for your mentees, when you ask them, do you have a goal? To always make sure that their goals are SMART. But obviously, like with all things, start with yourself. I'm going to ask you again. How many of you have got a smart goal? Let me see your hands. Good. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's be honest. When we talk about goals, there can be obstacles. That's life, isn't it? Yes. Life is not like this. Life goes like this. We do have our ups and we do have our downs in life. And that's fine and that's okay. Why is it okay? Because it's those times when it goes difficult that helps us also to, to grow, isn't it? And also, it helps us to make our goal even that more meaningful when you reach it ultimately. Okay. So there will be obstacles. But what is important is to be proactive about your your obstacles and also to have a plan to bypass it so what can stop you in reaching your goals think about it for yourself as well for this year not planning if you don't plan maybe friends that can derail you and that can be very important for your mentees as well i think yesterday some of the presenters did speak about friends Yes, they can derail, derail you from reaching your goals here at university. Also, you must ask yourself, did I say too much for myself? That can also happen. Okay. And is there a realistic time frame for me to reach my goals? And is my goals smart? Very important. And then, of course, celebrate your successes. Celebrate it. Celebrate those small steps, those mini goals that you achieve. Celebrate it. Don't get stuck. If for some reason you set yourself a mini goal and you didn't achieve it, if you told yourself you wanted 70% for this test and you got 60%, don't get stuck. Have a look at your goals again. Maybe see where you went wrong. And then celebrate both your failures and your successes. We are very scared of failures. We are, but we can learn a lot from them. And we mustn't allow the failures to derail us totally. Be careful of that. So celebrate your successes as well. Now goals is one part of my presentation. And like I said, it's crucial to have a goal. And it's an important element actually for all human beings. So go home tonight and ask your mother, father, caregiver, friend, do they have a goal as well? It's very important, but very closely linked to goals is motivation. Goals will help you to feel more motivated, but motivation will also help you to reach your goals. Reach your goals. You know, I found with, and I've read this as well, that let's face it, to study is not the funnest activity in the world. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> it's not. It's not. So how do you motivate yourself then to study? Think about it. How do you mot motivate yourself then to study? And I've found, working with students, that one of the biggest things that help them to motivate to study and study hard, to make that decision between going to that party tonight or going back to the books. It's not always easy to make that responsible decision, but what helps you to make that decision is the rewards of going back to the books, the results of studying hard. That helps you to be motivated, to stay motivated. It's usually easy 
to motivate yourself to do something which you like, isn't it? Actually, you don't need to motivate yourself because it's nice. But let's face it, to study hard, to go and write those summaries, etc., etc., you need to put in the effort to motivate yourself to do that. And that is why I say, always to remember then why you are here, why you are studying. And it links back to your goal. So ask yourself this morning, how motivated are you on a scale? What do you think? I won't ask you. I won't put you on the spot. But on that continuum, where are you? With not being not motivated at all and then being very motivated. Where do you think you are? <laughs> Hopefully the beginning of the academic year, 10. 7, 8, 9, 10, thereabouts. Hopefully, very motivated, thinking, bring it on. I'm going to do this. But I've read somewhere, and this is word, very interesting to me, that an academic year has got a rhythm. Do you know what that means? Think about it. An academic year has got a rhythm. Meaning, as you go through the academic year, sometimes you're more motivated, and other times you're less motivated. When can you expect to be less motivated? Maybe uh, April. Why? Because then you've got a couple of months behind you of working very hard. It's almost, what? Exam. So now you're getting tired. Those of you coming from far away, feeling homesick? Yes. Maybe if you live in a commune, your roommates are getting on your nerves, things like that. So it can happen that sometimes you are more motivated than other times. But what's important is to always check your own motivation. This is very important. When you feel, start to feel demotivated, refer back to this continuum and ask yourself, where am I on this, uh, on this continuum regarding my own motivation? Can you see there what it says? <laughs> See what's happening there. Okay, motivation. Some people need more than others. Okay, so sometimes maybe you need that big shot behind you to motivate you. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> All right, so about motivation. Yes, a couple of very important facts to always consider. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, motivation is not the constant thing. It's not. Have you realized this? Mm. Sometimes you definitely feel more motivated than other times. I say to my students sometimes, I wish that cans of motivation can be bought. And I'm not talking about Red Bull. <laughs> yes, wouldn't that be so easy? You just buy a can of motivation, drink it, and yes, you're motivated. <laughs> but unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Motivation is not a constant thing. But what is very important, very important, and you can tell your mentees this as well, is to always beware or become aware of your level of motivation. Know where you are regarding your motivation. Because I've found with students that sometimes they can get stuck in a cycle of demotivation. And maybe that's happened to you somewhere in your career as well where you got stuck, meaning that you feel that you're starting to not be motivated anymore, and then you feel like doing less, and the less you do, the less you want to do that cycle. The more you sit on the couch and watch TV, instead of studying, writing your summaries, the more you want to sit on the couch. Have you found that? Mm. Mm. That can happen. And that is why I refer to the cycle of demotivation. Watch out for that. Watch out. Rather get into the habit of being motivated. Because the more motivated you get then, 
the more you accomplish and the more you are motivated again. So you see the difference. So become aware of your motivation and know motivation breeds more motivation. That's fantastic. But then you can ask your mentees and they say to you, they're not motivated at all. Then ask them, what are you waiting for? Because like with your goals, which is your responsibility, it should be your goal. The same with motivation. It's also up to you to be motivated. Yes, sometimes other people can assist you with your motivation. Yes, yes. But unfortunately, I cannot go through life with you, standing beside you, going like, yes, yes, go, go, you can do it, you can do it. Unfortunately not. So that is, that is up to you. Read that. <laughs> Do you motivate yourself daily? Do you? So what can you do then to become more motivated? Let's start with your self-talk. Do you know that you are talking to yourself constantly? Yes. Yes, okay. Sometimes when I say that to students, I think, oh, she's going to think I'm crazy. I'm talking to myself. No. You are constantly having thoughts. You are constantly giving yourself messages over and over and over again. In one of my other presentations, when I talk about, um, I think it's concentration, I, I've got the piece where I refer to the amount of thoughts you have. You have over a million thoughts a day. A million thoughts a day. Think about that. It's something like 90,000 thoughts in a minute or something like that. It's, it's staggering. So now I ask you, if you've got so many thoughts a day, and those, those thoughts are negative, what will happen? So... It's very important to become aware of your self-talk. As you are sitting here, ask yourself, what is the constant messages I give myself? Is it messages that start with, I can't? I won't be able. Like my examples there, I can't concentrate. I hate research. I will never be able to pass it. Now, if you've got these thoughts running around in your mind constantly, will you be motivated? No, it will be very difficult for you to get motivated and stay motivated. So, become aware of your self-talk. Is it positive or is it negative? The messages you give yourself. Try to challenge yourself. Challenge those negative self-talk. Those negative messages you give yourself. Because a lot of the time, those negative messages can be unrealistic. And rather, give yourself more positive self-talk, positive messages. Then, visualization. It's very important when you talk about motivation. Now, what is visualization? That is where you, if you close your eyes, you can picture something. Okay, so I want all of you to close your eyes for me, please. Okay, close your eyes for me, please. And what I want you to do is to picture yourself five years from now. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Where are you working? In which position? Where are you living? I'm not going to ask who's living there with you. <laughs> Can you picture it? Can you see it? Is it crystal clear? Okay, now you can open your eyes. All right, 
That was a very quick visualization exercise. That is where you close your eyes and you can picture yourself. And hopefully what you saw was crystal clear for you. Visualize yourself being successful and achieving that goal so that you know where you are going. I wish you could see what I saw just now when I asked you, you where do you see yourself five years from now? You, all of you went like this. <laughs> <laughs> you liked what you saw. That's fantastic. How did that make you feel? Awesome. awesome. Energized. See, that Vuma I was talking about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you felt motivated. You felt motivated. So what I suggest is that whatever you saw five years from now, get a visualization of that. If you saw yourself five years from now working at a specific company, doing your dream job, get the emblem of that company and put it next to your desk. Why? When you do start to feel demotivated, remember I told you motivation is not constant? When you do start to feel demotivated, what can you do? You look at that picture and you remind yourself, why are you studying so hard? Why aren't you going to that party where everybody else is going? Because of where you are heading towards, where you see yourself. Visualize your success. It will help you to get motivated and to stay motivated. So you can ask your mentees as well. And you ask them, do they have goals? You can ask them, close your eyes, where do you see yourself five years from now? Because that will also help them to motivate themselves. So know exactly what it is, what you want. How often do you ask yourself, what do I want? You must know exactly what it is that you want. Reward yourself a job well done. Now there's other things that you also can do to be motivated and to stay motivated. Things like a motivational song. Now I don't know if you know this song because it's an old song, but I love this song. I Will Survive. You know that song? Gloria Gaynor. Now think about it. If you feel demotivated and you play that song loud and you sing it, I will survive. How would you feel? Much more motivated. So whatever motivational song is for you, have that song in mind. And remember, become aware of your motivation and when your motivation starts to slip, play that song for yourself. There's lots of motivational quotes as well. Get your own motivational quote for yourself. I love this one from Henry Ford. It says, whether you can or you can't, you are usually right. Think about it. Whether you can or you can't, you are usually right. It's again the power of positive thinking. Also a book. There's so many motivational books as well that you can read if you feel demotivated. And also you can get a motivational role model. Somebody that if you speak to this person or you look at this person, you immediately almost start to feel motivated again for what this person accomplished in their lives. And hopefully you can be that for your mentees. And then you can also get a visual board. That is where you can get a poster. And what you do is you look for pictures, visual representations of things that motivate you and things you want to achieve in your life. And then you can put that also next to your desk somewhere where you can see it constantly. So these are some of the things that you can do to be motivated or to start to get motivated. Right, so when it comes to goal setting, nobody can do it on your behalf, ladies and gentlemen, nobody. Okay, it's for you to be motivated and to have a goal. So, again, as you can ask your mentees, I'll ask you, what are you waiting for? If you don't have a goal, if you don't feel motivated, you need to start now. Take action. Your goal needs to be something that drives you. You need to feel 
passionate about it. Proper goal setting can be incredibly motivating, but you need to start somewhere. So if you don't have a goal, and if your goal is not smart, use this opportunity to get that goal, that smart goal. So this is what I suggest, and you can write it down, or maybe it is there. <coughs> to write down your goal in a smart way, you can start by writing down, my goal is, and then be very specific. Remember the smart goal. What is your time frame to reach your goal? You need to have that. In order to achieve my goal, you will need to do what? Those are your mini goals. What will be your evidence of progress? Now that is also the small steps of success. So how would you know that you are starting to reach your goals? Remember I told you it's very important to have those successes as well. And then of course visualize it. You need to work at your goals daily, ladies and gentlemen. Daily. Okay. So this is what I suggest. If you don't have a goal, get one immediately, today. If you do have a goal, have a look at it again. And test yourself and ask yourself, is my goal smart? I also sometimes ask my students if they say they've got a goal. Then I'll ask them, okay, tell me your goal. And sometimes it's not smart, but sometimes I also realize with students that they maybe have a goal in their first year for their whole tertiary education. But you need to constantly revisit your goals to ask yourself, am I still on track in reaching my goals? And then, of course, remember, you also have things like short, medium, and long-term goals. Your short-term goals can be goals for now. And then medium-term goals, they usually talk about medium-term goals more one to five years, and then long-term goals five to ten years from now. You see why you need to revise them? Because if you had your goal when you started to study, it may be changed in the meantime, or maybe you had to change it. So you need to revisit your goals. So I recommend this. So write down your goals. Write them down. Use the checklist. Make sure it's smart. What also sometimes can help is to have your own personal motto. Do you have a motto? Do you know what a motto is? Good. Do you have one? Okay. That can also help if you start to feel demotivated. You can have that personal motto. It can also help you to get more motivated again. Okay. Any questions about goals and motivation? No. All right. So before I do, I've still got three more slides to do with you, then I'm finished. But what I want you to do is to stand up for me again. Please stand up for me again.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Nadia also just asked me, um, I've got five minutes, to also just tell you about a new project we have here at the GUT. Now, as you see behind me, it's called Study Buddy at ESP. It's something we as a study team started in 2010, end of 2010, and we worked, no, actually end of 2011, we worked last year through the course of 2012 on this very hard. It's something we are very excited about, and hopefully this can assist all the TUT students as well. Now, what we did is we realized that not all students would maybe feel comfortable coming to our offices for study intervention with a study practitioner. Or, alternatively, we found that some students maybe don't have the time to come and consult with a study practitioner in their office one-on-one. -on -one. So what we did is we took all our knowledge from the team, which is a lot of knowledge, and what we did is we put it on my tutor. So it's an electronic study program that covers all the relevant study themes. This is available for all students. So if you do have a mentee, and for yourself as well, it doesn't take that long to go through the program. And it's really, it's all the relevant information that you need for study. What you can do is you can also ask your mentee if they would rather prefer to go on the electronic study program. And by all means, they can do that. It's very easy. If you're a registered student, anything that you need to do is you can um, send your student number, surname and name, and the course code, which is SBESP, it stands for Study Buddy, an electronic study program, to the MyTutor address. And then they can register you because you need to have that code to have access to Study Buddy. And once you have access at your own time, you can go on that program and go through the electronic study program. There's some lovely exercises on there, questionnaires, practical exercises. So I would really recommend for you guys to first go through this program as well for yourself. Now you would get this information through now your training now, because a lot of the practitioners that worked on the study buddy, they would also present to you now, but um, when you go through this program, you've got a little bit more time and there's exercises that you can do as well. So I really recommend that you go through this program. We are still doing a project, a pilot project, so um, to see if the, the study buddy is, is working well, it's user-friendly, it's relevant for the students, uh, but all the information is, is up for you to go through it. I would say it's 95% complete as we would like it. We just like some feedback from students, so we're busy with a pilot project to see if there's some improvements we can still make. So really, guys, it's very easy, um, and you, it doesn't take that long to go through it as well. Even if you think you don't need study skills intervention, in my experience working with students, that almost all of the time when I ask a group like you guys, how many of you were ever taught study skills? Let me see. How many of you were taught study skills? Okay, not yet the GUT. How many of you were taught uh, study skills? Okay, um, it's about 10, I would say. It's about 5% of you were taught study skills somewhere in your life. Um, so I would think that you can also benefit from it, but for your mentee's sake as well. So use this service. Like I said, if you're registered, it's for everybody. Okay, any questions? Thank you so much for your attention and good luck. Good luck for yourselves for this.